Hello and welcome. Today I would like to talk about RAS for large malt design and development. Um, just to start, my name is Line Torp Olsen. I work at Acre Group Land Based in Denmark and I have been working there for the past five years, starting as a project engineer. Then uh, I became project manager and have built uh, our systems all over the world. And approximately one year ago, I started working with Jakob <coughs> in the sales department, helping uh, clients identifying their needs and uh, calculating prices, of course, and overall dimensioning of the system. So today, uh, my agenda is a little bit about why is it interesting to look at this. Um, some of you already uh, went around that topic. <coughs> then I would like to tell you a bit about our uh, Acre Group RAS technology and how that works. Challenges we have by scaling the RAS to these uh, big systems. And in the end, I would like to show you some cases. So why is it interesting to look into this market, keeping salmon longer time on land? Um, there are many reasons, but just to address a few. Here you can see a curve that uh, we got from, uh, from the Faroe Islands, some of our clients there. And by, we, um, by comparing um, a salmon that have been stayed in a RAS system until it's one kilo. Then enters the sea afterwards, it will reach five kilos within 11 months. And if we compare with a salmon that, salmon that enters the sea at 100 gram, it will take approximately 18 months to reach five kilo. So this means by keeping the salmon on land um, for longer, you will reduce the total life cycle by three to four months, and you will reduce the time in the, uh, in the sea by six to seven months. And by reducing the time in the sea, the exposure for parasites and diseases reduce as well. So in the end, you will have a larger and healthier production. And how can we keep salmon's longer time on land? Um, here you see a sketch of Agri Group's RAS technology uh, and just to go through the different processes so everybody is on the same page. Um, starting in the fish tanks, um, here we make sure that we have an optimal water velocity in the tank. This is to secure the, a good environment for the fish but also for a good exercise to give them a better meat quality. From the fish tank, the water flow runs by gravity into our mechanical filter here. And uh, it will remove the large particles, uh, larger than 40 to 60 microns. And this is crucial for the water quality and optimal biofilter performance. <coughs> After that, it goes into our biofilter, which is a fixed bed technology that turns uh, metabolic waste into harmless nitrate and work also as a microparticle micro um, filter. The fixed bed technology is uh, energy efficient and often offers high biological stability. From that, it goes into this ozone chamber. Um, and the ozone helps cleaning the water and the microorganisms are neutralized and um, all flavor levels are controlled. In the end of our rest we have our degassing and it is designed for efficient removal of CO2 and free the nitrogen the water is aerated at a low energy cost and is self-cleaning with no dead zones. In the end, 
the water is pumped back into an oxygen cone where the uh, where we add the oxygen again and then the water is ready to go back into the fish tank. If you don't have that much water available, um, we also have an add-on to, to our basic rest, which we call zero water concept. It consists of a plate separator, then we have the denitrification system, and if you are very low on the amount of water you uh, uh, the system requires, we can also add the phosphorus system. So, to compare the different technologies, going with our RAS system with fixed bed technology, which was this uh, basic RAS here, you will need 300 liters of new water per kilo feet you add into the system. But by adding the plate separator and the denitrification system, you would have already go down to 100 liters per kilo feet. And going all the way with our zero water concept, adding the phosphorus system in the end, you would only need 30 liters per kilo feet. So we can actually reuse a huge amount of waters, um, which a lot of clients are interested in. in. I know that here on Iceland you have a lot of water, but uh, they don't have that in, in many other places. So challenges we had we saw by scaling this rest system. More and more clients started requesting um, these big rest units for large mud, but um, with bigger fish it also requires more food and therefore the rest needs bigger footprint, which could be a deal breaker for some of the clients. We also uh, saw that, or because of these, uh, the amount of fish and the size, we also need many more biofilters, which also requires uh, more staff for cleaning them. The size of fish also requires bigger fish tank and therefore more flow into each tank to exchange the water two times per hour. And with our regular uh, design we always have a, a, a low pressure oxygen cone so all the water goes actually through a low pressure oxygen cone but scaling the system we saw that we either need to develop very, very big oxygen cones, and again, that would have a bad impact on the footprint, or we could uh, install a lot of oxygen cones. In, in the end, that wouldn't be a, a, a good solution. So, the solution, Aqua Group's new design for Cosmol. Here you see, uh, we, yeah, we went over our design and developed a new setup that minimized the footprint, optimized the cleaning of biofilter and minimizing the amount of oxygen cones needed. We have uh, four fish tanks with a, a volume of 2,000 cubic meters and it can produce 500 uh, <laughs> 500 ton, thousand ton, uh, kilo uh, biomass with an uh, average size of 500 grams and the biofilter has a capacity of 8,000 kilo feet per day and that's, this is a basic rest so it doesn't include the zero water uh, concept. So how is it uh, possible to reduce the footprint? By placing the degassing on top of the biofilter, we actually reduce the footprint comparing to the same system where the degassing is placed after the biofilters with 30%. Our uh, degassing usually have a, a needs a retention time of two minutes, so we could really use, uh, yeah, save a lot of space there. 
here you see the system in a simple section view. All the components are not on this <coughs> deck. It's just to give you an idea. We still have the mechanical filters. Then we added a pre-degassing um, before the biofilters to help remove the CO2, but also for better saturation of the lime to adjust the pH level in the water before it goes into the biofilter. This makes the biofilter much more uh, efficient. <coughs> then the water grows down here and through the biofilter and up in the top we will place the degassing. And then we have the ozone chamber as well. And yeah, the advantage of this design is that we reduce the footprint and we also have a bit more redundancy. The degassing is divided into every each uh, biofilter. That means it's divided into more sections. So if one blower's uh, shut off, you it wouldn't turn off the the whole system or half of the system. It will only be a partial uh, part of the flow that is uh, affected. But the disadvantage is that. Uh, it requires that you sometimes shut off the degassing blower for controlling the aeration that ha is happening down here in the biofilter. The aeration of the biofilter is uh, very important for the biofilter to work properly, so you would need it from time to time to, to go check on that. Solution to often cleaning the biofilters, the hybrid biofilter. It's a system that allows uh, continuous cleaning of biomedia and it's working by, we add some water from the rest into these uh, small pipes here. There is a hole, so it will create some injection and take in the biomedia in the top and go down here in the will be released in the bottom of the biofilter. This process do that we continuously clean the biomedia and, and therefore we reduce the amount of cleaning needed. So you will still have the advantage of a fixed bed biofilter but yeah, reduce the amount of uh, cleaning a lot in some cases. Again, it's very different from client to client, how they run the system and how, uh, how hard they are running uh, the biofilter. But uh, comparing, um, we see that you would have to only clean the biofilters uh, every uh, 12 weeks and where they usually would clean it every five weeks. So it's uh, quite an improvement. Then the solution to oxygenating the big flow. We divided the flow into two. The main flow, which is now pumped through some pro uh, low pressure propeller pumps. So here. Um, to re reduce the energy. And then the second flow is pumped from the rest into high pressure cones. So here. The, the Cones are connected to a ring system that all are connected to each fish tank. So when a s you reach a certain level, low level of oxygen in that fish tank, a motorized valve would open to this um, to this ring connection and add oxygenated water into the fish tank, and thereby you will always have the right amount of oxygen in in every tank. So this was just to show you a bit about uh, some of the new develop developments we, we've been working on and uh, there is a lot of other things that we are working on improving always like uh, first piece transportation which is also a, a high topic in, in our company but I won't go into that today. <laughs> Just to show you some uh, different cases, what we have built. Uh, here you see a Tudlandsvi, <coughs> or uh, one of the three post model systems that we have built. 
they are in operation at, and have been for a um, couple of years now. The systems are designed for uh, one kilo fish and they all have a total uh, feeding capacity of 25,500 uh, kilo per day with a total volume of 24,000 cubic meters in the fish tanks and the yearly production is 4.5 million smalt, large smalt of this one, one kilo. The target freshwater consumption that these three systems needs is uh, 12 liters per second. These systems have our zero water concept uh, installed. So that's why we can uh, reuse so much of the water. Um, just to show you some more pictures to get a bit of an idea of the scales. These are Hydrotex, uh, some of the biggest uh, mechanical filters from Hydrotech, and uh, just a bit of the biofilters. Here you see one of the RAS systems, and uh, to each RAS system there is connected four fish tanks. So a uh, quite large system. Then uh, we are also starting working on this uh, Svarberget, which is a new system under construction. It's not uh, fully up and running yet, but uh, when it's uh, completely done, we will have built a hatchery, start feeding, and a small system, and two post-small system. The post-small system are expected to grow at 500 gram, with a total feeding capacity of 15,000 kilo per day and a tank volume, total tank volume at 30,700 uh, cubic meters with a yearly production of 7.5 million fish and a growth of uh, yeah, 500 grams. And the total water consumption for these systems are 25 cubic meters per hour or 7 liters per second. So again, very low amount of new water is needed. Yeah, also some pictures from Svarberget. And then uh, the last one, uh, Enes, which is also in uh, Norway, a new system that uh, we are also building and we have delivered everything for this, both the auxiliary system, the intake water, heating and cooling and feeding system, and then hatchery, start feed power and small grass. They are expecting to produce 6.6 .6 million fish with a uh, max size of 400 grams each. So. Yeah, we have some experience in this, but some of this, these systems are, of course, not up and running yet. We have other systems that are similar to this, uh, just a bit older, but also up and running and very functional. This was just to show you the, the, whole, uh, the whole system. And that was it for me. Any questions? Uh, there is uh, quite a lot of um, heat that is uh, consumed in the system. Yes. Do you need uh, do you need to use a lot of uh, energy to cool down the system? Down if we have let's say it's eleven calories. Yes, uh, there is a need for for cooling these systems in uh, in general uh, because of the. Mm -hmm amount of fish in the system, they create really a, a lot of heat. Um, but again, it really depends on what, if you have some seawater, cold seawater available, then the cost for cooling the system can be quite low, because yeah, you could just use that as uh, 
a cooling source. So it depends really on where you are in the world. Uh, we've built some systems in uh, Dubai. You need a lot of cooling there, but uh, in Norway, close to the coast, where you have uh, cold seawater, yeah, the, the amount of cooling is, uh, is a bit less and uh, less expensive. Any other questions? So, thank you. Thank you.